Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about, with the temperatures falling outside and fall coming, we're going to talk about your engine preheat. Why should you do it? What are the benefits? What happens if you do it without it? So stay tuned while we explore the topic of engine preheat. Hmm. So we would like to ask you, please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. Now, in an ideal world, you'd have a heated hangar, you know, a radiant floor. You park your airplane at 65 degrees year round. You pull it out on a cold day. You're already warm, cabin and engine, and you're ready to go. But not all of us have a radiant floor heater. Um, many of us have a hangar. We may have forced air, or we don't even have anything but electricity and lighting. And in that case, you're looking at a Tannis heater system and this will put some heating probes. Now the simplest thing you can do is just put a heating pad on the oil sump and count yourself lucky. But if you've got a Tannis system, it heats the cylinders, it heats the oil sump so that the whole engine is warm and when you surround it with a shroud or a sleeping bag or some other sort of cowling cover to keep the heat in the engine, you can do a pretty good job of warming your engine. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit more portable, you can get like a Red Dragon. And this is part of the forced air heat. It burns uh, some sort of propellant and it makes warm air, which you duck into the engine. And again, you want it shrouded to keep the heat in, but you're using this warm air to warm the engine and everything in there. Now, it doesn't happen immediately. It comes in a wide variety of sizes and shapes. You can warm a big engine, you can warm a small engine. I mean, there are people who literally throw a sleeping bag over there and put a light bulb or a ceramic heater in their engine compartment and it's on a timer and it warms their airplane but the benefits of this is that if you warm your engine the engine's not going to be ice cold and what happens is is aluminum contracts a lot faster than steel and what can get the engine so cold there is no room for any oil in the clearances for the oil galleries and with the new multi viscosity oils you might have good oil pressure but you might not have any oil flow because the bearing passages also too we have to consider that when you first start an engine the piston and the cylinder expands a lot faster than the cylinders as they come up to temperature and that can cause some scuffing so you have oil galleries that are not allowed to open up all the way because of dissimilar metals and you have what goes on in the cylinder end so starting your engine ice cold is not good for it now they are engineered fairly well and i can tell you of one uh, tiger owner who started his engine many times in the ice cold and he made it past tbo but again it's the recommendation is for long engine life you want to go ahead and you want to preheat it and that means when it starts all your clearances are proper the oil's going to flow you're still going to want to bring it up to operating temperature before you take off but it's still better than starting an engine ice cold so ladies and gentlemen that's the basics of engine preheat so you're not starting an ice cold engine we hope you found all this useful and informative thanks for watching and have a great day flying your oven You know, forget buying expensive toys for your kittens and cats. Um, we find that just taking the aircraft spruce box and the paper on the tile floor is more than enough amusement for them for hours.